Would you like some? I'm just kidding, you can't have any. Cadet Kelly is a 2002 Disney Channel original movie about a girl named Kelly who was forced to leave her New York City performing arts high school and move upstate to attend military school after her stepfather gets a job as the head of the school. The film was most notable for the relationship between Kelly and another student named Jennifer, a relationship that many people have interpreted as gay. You are my partner. It's a queer love story that takes place in the background of an otherwise fairly regressive narrative about the importance of nationalism, conformity, and being a trad wife. That's right, it's Pride Month, which means I'm here to talk about the bizarre intersection of homonationalism and Disney Channel original movies, otherwise known as Cadet Kelly. I don't want to assume that everybody watching this video has seen or remembers the plot of Cadet Kelly, so before we get into my analysis, let's first do a very, very brief plot summary. Kelly is a New York City teenager who attends an alternative art school. That all changes when her stepfather gets a new job running a military school upstate. At first, Kelly struggles at her new school and has a particularly hostile relationship with another student named Jennifer. After Kelly ends up in cadet court for numerous infractions, including painting Jennifer's hair in the pattern of a rainbow, Kelly is sentenced to being the manager for the drill team. Kelly grows to appreciate the drill team and works hard to make the team the following semester. When Jennifer and Kelly are asked to perform a duet routine at the upcoming regionals competition, they put aside their differences and choreograph a unique routine that scores them second place in the competition. Cadet Kelly has become a cult classic in a lot of queer communities. For many, it was their queer awakening and the closest thing they had ever seen to representation on TV. So before my rewatch for this video, the last time I had seen Cadet Kelly was about five years ago and I rewatched the film um, specifically after reading all of the discussions about its gayness online. And even between then and now, I had forgotten how gay it was. The writers of this film are two people named Gail Parent and Michael Wash, and I honestly have no idea if they intended this film to be interpreted this way. I believe they must have had some idea for reasons I will get to later. Uh, but regardless, it really does not matter what their intentions were. You are allowed to interpret media any way you like, even if it's not the way that the authors intended it to be interpreted. So let's explore why people think this movie is gay. The relationship between Kelly and Jennifer is very easily interpreted as romantic rather than platonic. Kelly and Jennifer do not get along at first, but they do have this fun back and forth that continues throughout the entire movie. You're on my list, maggot. You'd be on mine if I had a list and the rivalry escalates as they compete for the affection of this man with the personality of a doormat. And I say man because the actor who played Brad in this movie was 21 years old at the time of filming in comparison to Christy Carlson Romano who was 17 and Hilary Duff who was only 14 years old. Well, there's somebody knows how to get down and dirty. Disgusting, illegal, moving on. Anyways, Kelly is trying to make Jennifer jealous and it works. In the straight interpretation of this movie, Jennifer is jealous because she wants to be with Brad. The gay interpretation is that Jennifer is jealous because she wants to be with Kelly, whether she realizes it or not. And so we have this love triangle going on, and the way that this is resolved by the writers is one of the reasons that makes me think that this reading is um, intentional. The conflict ends with Kelly having to choose between Jennifer and Brad, and she chooses Jennifer. Ma'am, this cadet has some really cool ideas about a routine that she'd like to share with the captain. Cool ideas, huh? Well, I'm sure you told Brad. Ma'am, no ma'am. You are my partner. You can't write that and not know it was gay. And after Kelly chooses Jennifer, there is no more discussion of Brad. He's irrelevant. Neither girl ends up with him at the end. In fact, Brad recognizes the chemistry that Jennifer and Kelly have together, which was part of the reason he chose the two of them to do the duet. I mean, there was fire, spirit. Our team could use a little more of that. 
There's also the rainbow imagery that's featured very heavily throughout this movie. Like, Kelly's security blanket literally looks like a gay pride flag. It's hard for me to put into words what makes this movie feel truly gay. You know it when you see it, and I saw it in this movie. Both Christy Carlson Romano and Hilary Duff have responded to um, all of the gay people that harassed them about this movie during Pride Month. Hilary Duff had no idea people were interpreting the film this way, but said, I didn't know that, but if it helps anybody, I hope so. Christy Carlson Romano also said that she didn't expect it to be interpreted that way, but was flattered that people feel the way they do about this film. I want to mention the ending of this film where Jennifer reveals that she is moving to Europe and won't be returning to military school the next year. And this was the second reason I felt like it was a little bit intentional for this to be read as a gay story. To me, this feels like the PG version of the bury your gaze trope. There's a pattern in media of gay characters not having happy endings. It feels like, to me, the writers almost recognized that the movie was pretty gay, and so to make sure nobody thought they were endorsing the gayness, they gotta break them up at the end, make sure that um, it's clear that they, they do not end up together. And for that reason, I think the ending that Jennifer announces she's moving to Europe is homophobic. Acceptance of gay people in the military is a rather recent phenomenon. And when I say military here, I'm talking about the larger institution of the military. This isn't about specific people. You've probably heard of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, a policy in place from 1994 to 2011 that let gay people serve in the military so long as they didn't tell anybody about it. So why does the military suddenly like gay people. First, the military cares a lot about its public image. They're doing Pride for the same reason corporations like Walmart and Target participate in Pride. It's good for business and recruitment. How cursed is that? Rainbow bullets? So how does the military convince women and queer people that enlisting is a good idea? Well, one way they do this is presenting being pro-military as the wokest choice. No, America isn't violently invading another country. It's, it's liberating and freeing them from their horrible oppressors who are homophobic and sexist the worst. And this is pretty much exactly what happens in Cadet Kelly. In the beginning of the film, Kelly is everything the military is not. She's free spirited, creative, caring, and emotional, and that's what makes her the perfect protagonist for the film. Kelly is a liberal snowflake who hates guns and war. It would be dishonest of me not to tell you right now that I am a conscientious objector. Her dislike of guns is one of the reasons she initially dislikes the drill team. I believe in gun control. These are all framed as negative traits that Kelly must overcome. She's naive, she's out of touch, she doesn't have a stable father figure. I'm going to quote an article that I will link below in the description by a person named Deborah Cowan who has been calling this movie a homoerotic militaristic mess since 2004. She's ahead of the game. She looked at this movie in 2004 and was like, yep, it's gay. In this movie, the working class and people of color are lucky to have the option of joining the military. I'm lucky to be here. This is like a heaven on earth for a girl like me. These subtle maneuvers that position anti-fascism and anti-militarism as essentially bourgeois. And slowly, all of Kelly's left-leaning beliefs are beat out of her, metaphorically. Specifically with the help of her strict disciplinarian father, whom she calls Sir. Uniformity is something we strive for. Are you sure that's a good thing? I'm positive. Sir helps Kelly begin to see a place for herself within the confines of the military-industrial complex. And we know her ideological transformation is complete when she says the following. I suddenly understood why it was important to stomach Jennifer. Jennifer treats Kelly very unfairly throughout most of this movie. She breaks her stuff, she is rude, she makes her miss the dance. And the conclusion to this is not that Jennifer should be kinder. It's that Kelly should put up with it because Jennifer is a higher rank than her and it's good for the team for her to conform. It's an interesting lesson, don't you think? She learns to sacrifice her desires and ambitions, even her own explicit anti-violence and gun control politics, in favor of desirous identification in the fascist conformity of cadet life. And Cadet Kelly features some more fun ideas that are traditionally associated with 
nationalism, like the patriarchy and traditional gender roles. Kelly begins the movie living with her single mother in New York City. And her mom's name is Samantha. I'm gonna call her Samantha. I don't think they say her name in the movie, but IMDB said her name is Samantha. Her mother's a successful editor in a big high rise, but struggles with domestic tasks like cooking. Both Kelly and Samantha lack a strong male influence in their life. Samantha is divorced from Kelly's father, named Adam, who is mostly absent in her life due to being an irresponsible traveling photographer. And the movie frames this lack of male influence as a problem. But never fear, ladies, a strong patriarch is on his way in the form of Sir. Sir is the opposite of Kelly's father. He's strict, stern, reliable, organized. And listen to how Kelly initially describes him. I think you'll be good for my mom. You being so stable and all. He was a really nice guy who made us feel terrifically safe. Implying that the two had neither of those things before, which does not seem correct. Samantha seemed to be doing fine as a successful editor in New York City. But we all know that a woman's place is not in a high rise in New York City, it's as a mother at home. I'm like, I'm kidding. You know I'm kidding, right? If you got through this video and thought that my stance on woman was they belonged in the home, um, well. Wow. Anyways, with this new male presence, Samantha is able to fulfill her feminine duties. I'm gonna be doing a lot less editing. We'll be moving upstate. I'm gonna learn how to do things like make curtains and uh, maybe even cook. Cool. But her journey from coming this high-powered, successful liberal businesswoman to literally a pregnant trad wife who can now cook for her husband and kids, it's suspicious in the context of this movie. Oh, and guess what? You're not gonna believe this. When I bought this turkey, it was raw. The importance of a strong disciplinarian father figure is a very big theme throughout this movie. It's the lack of a positive male influence that is blamed for Kelly's unruliness and hyperactivity. Sir himself is constantly talking about how his father previously ran the school and all he wants to do is make him proud. As you know, my father was commandant of this academy. This is the job I've wanted all my life, listening to my dad, watching him. Their family literally occupies the house where Sir's father once lived with his family. And it's Sir's importance as a strong father figure that is integral to Kelly's story. I've thought long and hard about your punishment and I think I've come up with just the one. I hereby sentence you to the drill team. Her mom doesn't matter. Her cock dad definitely doesn't matter. What Kelly needs is a strong, disciplinary and parent in the form of Gary Cole. Another way this movie can be viewed is the story of Sir taking these liberal New York City women and teaching them how, teaching them their place. Kelly is able to submit to authority and his wife now just stays at home and doesn't have a job. The American dream. The movie ends with Kelly and Jennifer presenting their routine. And it's presented as this empowering girl power thing, it, but it feels wrong, you know? I would not call this girl power. I would not call it girl power. It's a good routine though. I liked watching it. Kenneth Kelly is complicated. There is an entire generation of queer adults that grew up loving this movie. This was the closest thing that many people had ever seen to gay representation in media. And I don't want anyone who watched my video to feel like it's bad or wrong that they liked this movie or still like this movie. We can criticize things that we like. I think both Hilary Duff and Christy Carlson Romano gave amazing performances in this movie. I like watching Kelly spin her gun. It's fun. But we shouldn't let all of that homoerotic subtext distract us from all of the other weird stuff that's going on in this movie. All right, let's bring up my rating chart. So I do not feel like I have really sorted out my feelings on this movie. I feel like making this video only made me more confused. So this is subject to change as always. We're fluid here. Is this movie good? No, it is not a good movie. Did I like this movie? Mm, no. Before my rewatch, I think I would have said yes, I like this movie, but I broke my brain over analyzing this movie and I think I ruined it for myself, um, unfortunately. So what did you think about Cadet Kelly? 
Do you like it? Do you not like it? I'm dying to know. Thank you so much for getting through this video. Remember, these are all my opinions. And it's not that serious. I had a dream I was watching a YouTuber who also like sang their outro like that. It made me feel bad. All right, everybody, that's all I have for today. I will see you in the next one.